Thank you to Skillshare for supporting this episode of Animal Wonders. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Hi everyone, welcome back to Animal Wonders. I'm Jessie and this is Pearl, the Colombian black and white tegu. Our planet is amazing. There are millions of different species of animals, each with their own unique and fantastic adaptations, helping them survive. And every day scientists are studying and learning more and more about these animals. As they learn more, Scientists are adding a block of knowledge onto the information we already know, building off discoveries made in the past. But every once in a while, a new discovery is made that makes us question some of those earlier facts. Scientists are left scratching their heads and wondering how this new discovery fits in with old ones. Today, I want to share a cool discovery scientists made about the Argentinian black and white tegus. That's not pearl species, but it's close. Scientists have found that unlike other reptiles, Argentine tegus can change their body temperature instead of relying on just their environment. Before we jump straight into the new discovery, we need to talk about what scientists already know about how animals maintain their body temperature. Most of us are already familiar with the terms warm-blooded and cold-blooded. And for a long time, these were the terms used to differentiate between different groups of animals. But those terms are a bit misleading. Instead, I like to use endothermic and ectothermic, since they are a better description of what's actually happening. Endothermic or warm-blooded animals, like mammals and birds, are able to regulate their own body temperature and keep it the same no matter what environment they're in. That's why mammals and birds can be found all over the world. But on the downside, it costs a lot of energy. Think of our own homes as an example. In the summer, we turn on the air conditioning to keep our homes cool. And in the winter, we turn on the heat to keep our homes warm. But heating or cooling your entire home requires a lot of energy and money. And the cooler you want it in the summer, the more it costs. So endothermic animals usually have to eat more food more often in order to have enough energy to survive. Another downside to being endothermic is if we get sick or injured and our bodies can't maintain the specific temperature that we need, we won't survive. Most of us have had a fever before. We feel cold and weak, and usually we end up laying in bed until our temperature goes back to normal. And this can happen even if our temperature goes up by just two degrees. Endothermic animals are completely dependent on their temperature staying the same. Now let's talk about ectothermic animals like Pearl here. Ectothermic or cold-blooded animals can't regulate their own body temperature and rely on their environment to increase or decrease their temperature. These animals include invertebrates, fish, amphibians, and reptiles. A simpler way to think of ectothermic animals is their body temperature matches the temperature of their environment. So if they're outside and it's 75 degrees, they'll be 75 degrees. And if they're underground where it's 50 degrees, they'll be about 50 degrees. Since ectothermic animals rely so heavily on their environment for warmth, many of them would not be able to survive in extremely cold environments. Just like endotherms, their muscles and organs require chemical reactions in order for them to function properly. And some of these chemical reactions won't happen unless the body reaches a certain temperature. So if it's too cold, some ectotherms won't be able to move or digest their food. But there are some major benefits for being ectothermic. Ectotherms don't have to use energy to maintain a specific temperature, so they don't have to eat as much. Endotherms of about the same size have to eat five to 20 times more food than ectotherms. So ectothermic animals can better survive in environments where food is scarce. Also, ectotherms are able to withstand huge temperature changes in their body, even in a single day. Here at Animal Wonders, we're in Montana. And during the summer, it may only be 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning. And then during the day, the temperature may get all the way up to 90 or even 100 degrees Fahrenheit before plummeting back down during the night. That's a 40 or even 50 degree change. And the ectotherms living here could go through those temperature changes every day. 
So most ectotherms match the environment's temperature, and most endotherms maintain a specific temperature. And I want to specifically say most, because sometimes there are exceptions to the rules. Some ectotherms, like insects and fish, can move their muscles to generate heat in specific parts of their body. Scientists have also discovered a couple python species where the females will shiver their bodies when they're incubating their eggs to help keep the eggs warm. And in 2016, a group of scientists published a paper after discovering that Argentine black and white tegus can increase their own body temperatures. Argentine black and white tegus are native to southeastern South America and can live in a variety of habitats, including rainforests, savannas, and semi-arid deserts. They're omnivorous, and they'll eat insects, fruit, eggs, small mammals, birds, and more. They're also really good at burrowing, and in the evenings they retreat into their burrows and then emerge in the morning. A group of scientists were studying these tegus and saw the expected results for ectothermic animals. When the tegus first entered their burrow in the evening, they were still warm from the heat of the day but they slowly cooled, and between 4 and 6 a.m., the tegu's body temperatures reached their lowest and matched the temperature of their burrow. But during the mating season from September to December, they suddenly saw a shift. Both males and females suddenly had warmer body temperatures, even from 4 to 6 a.m. when their temperature should have been the lowest. And this isn't totally unheard of. As we talked about earlier, there are some ectotherms that can adjust their temperature. But there are a couple of things that made the tegus odd and different from those other exceptions. First, the difference in temperature between their body and their burrow is astounding. When insects and fish move their muscles to generate heat, their body temperature only increases by a few degrees. But the tegus were documented with body temperatures up to 18 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the temperature of their burrows. Second. Unlike pythons, both females and males had raised temperatures. Even though the males are not incubating or protecting the eggs in any way, their body temperatures were just as high as the females. And lastly, but most intriguing, scientists don't know how they're increasing their temperatures. They aren't moving around to generate their own heat, and there's no outside source of heat. So as of now, it's a total mystery. One scientist has guessed that maybe it could be due to hormones being secreted that send certain body tissues into overdrive. And they did notice an increase in heart rates and breathing rates, but they don't have any definitive proof for that theory. So how are these tegus doing it? And why? Are they just making sure they're able to search for and find a mate? Do the males want to better impress a female? We don't know. Yet. This new discovery about Argentine tegus has left scientists with so many questions, and I think that is so exciting! It leaves room for us to learn new things. Maybe there are other reptiles that can do this as well, and we just don't know about it. So will scientists start studying other similar species? And maybe this could help us understand how endothermic animals evolve. Endothermy is costly and uses so much time and energy. So why did it evolve? So maybe this path of discovery will lead to new definitions of endothermy and ectothermy. I think it's really exciting not knowing what's coming next. And this is one of my absolute favorite things about science. There are always new things to learn and discover, and all you have to do is wonder. Speaking of wondering, have you ever wanted to add plants to your living space, but are wondering if after the 10th attempt you could finally keep them alive this time? If this sounds like you, I have the perfect class for you. I adore all of my plants, and they bring me so much happiness. So if you'd like to learn how to get started with your own indoor plants, you should check out this class on Skillshare called Happy House Plants Caring for Your Plants. Chris is a botanist, and in his class, he teaches you how to pot several plants and how to keep them healthy. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. And it makes it easy with short classes that will fit into your daily routine. A premium membership will give you unlimited access, so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. An annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month, and if you're one of the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description, you can get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. So I hope you all keep wondering and keep asking questions, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Bye.